he also did the Snoopy. And what I really liked about Snoopy is that he created a Woodstock figure and gave the coordinates of that. So really, really cool. And I really like um, the creativity as to what he did. Brody, yes. Or Brogdon, sorry. Uh, it stuck on the robot. The song. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. Oh, really? So I'm going to stop sharing screen and I'm going to share again. Hold on. Um, let's see if that works better. All right. So what you cut off now what you should be seeing now and i'm going to make this look a little bit more clear for you is you should see a list of destinations so i told your parents and i said to your parents hey tell me where you were going to be going tell me where you were going to be going this spring break and i'm gonna take you there today because nobody's allowed to travel for spring break I was gonna be in Israel at 31 degrees north, 34 degrees east. And there are about 50 other places where the mathletes were going to go. And we're talking everywhere from Ohio to California, to France, to Spain, to, um, to Jamaica, to Wyoming, to London, to Paris, to China. Oh my God, oh, the places you'll go. And I would like to go on a journey. Do you guys want to go with me? Um, if it's to Hawaii. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. But the first thing we have to do, the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what we need on our trip. So the most important thing, in my opinion, when you travel is to prepare. Now it happens to also be the Boy Scout and the Girl Scout motto. Oh, and that no. is be prepared. So if you are always prepared, then you know that you'll always have the right stuff. So for instance, I think of mathematicians and chess players as being the most prepared people on the planet. They really think ahead in everything they do. And so you guys should appreciate the planning that your parents put in to a successful vacation. Reed, you raised your hand, go for it. I'm a really good chess player. <laughs> well, that's great. If you are a great chess player, that just means that you are uh, willing to think ahead. Now, your parents have to think of things like getting you on the right flight. But the kind of things that I think about are not being next to a smelly bathroom, okay? Because if I'm on an airplane, I, I can choose my seats, but I have to think ahead. Never wanna be near a smelly bathroom. Now, the other thing is, is that if you're traveling out of the country, your passport has to be valid for more than six months from when you travel. Let's say that your passport's going to expire in four months, you won't be able to go. So you've really got a plan. The other thing is, you've got to have foreign money if you travel. The other thing I like to do is research. Mm. I research everything about the country where I'm going. So for instance, when I went to Colombia, when I went to Colombia uh, in February, I did a lot of research about a particular fort that they had in Cartagena. And this fort in Cartagena was used to fight the English, the French, and the Spanish. And Colombia was able to get their independence because of this fort. So what's the first thing I did when I went to Cartagena? I went to the fort to see where the battle was won. And you know what? It was pretty amazing. 
because it was built way, way up, very strategically. So I really like to know about the places I'm going to go. Now, the other thing I do is I bring the things that I need. I always bring sunscreen. I always bring books. And I always bring games like chess, playing cards, or Sudoku. My children would bring a blanket or a pillow or a stuffed animal that helped them go to sleep. Sometimes it's really good to fall asleep on a plane. Be careful though, you risk losing these items when you travel. Now sports gear is important, but don't bring a lot. I used to bring three kites in these big bags, two surfboards and a harness. And I have to tell you something, I do not do that anymore. Now when I go on vacation, I rent at the beach and it really, really works. I also pack lightly. I make sure I have comfortable shoes, hat and sunglasses and I leave room in my luggage because maybe I'll buy some souvenirs, although they are a waste of money. Now, the reason I buy souvenirs is because they support the local economy. And if you go to a poor country, bring small gifts like bouncy balls or action figures that you don't use anymore to give away to children in need. And they really, really love that. Now, the most important thing I bring is my cell phone. And the reason I bring my cell phone is because it's got my camera. But the other reason is GPS, Global Positioning System. Can anybody give me a description about how it works. Not the fact that it finds your location. I want to know specifically how global positioning system works. I want to know what you know about it. And it's really important. Evan, I want you thinking about this. Milo, uh, I'm going to start with you, Cole. Go for it. Um, like, the, like satellites like take pictures of like the world and then they like put those pictures together to make a map well that is a fantastic start can you add to that Bogdan you'll have to unmute yourself also buddy uh they so you can type in the place where you want to go and the place you are at and then it finds the best route to go there and the big question is read maybe you can help us how does it work now we know that it's satellites. We know that you type in locations and it gives you directions. Talk to me, Reed. So, um, everybody knows what cellular data is, right? So your phone sends phone waves onto a satellite, which um, which brings it to a computer system like a robot algorithm, and. And it locates the the place the cell the cell um the phone waves came from and and then reflects it back to your phone in in milliseconds. Well, that's a really interesting explanation, and I want to give you guys a little more information about how this works. So, are you guys ready? We're gonna take a little trip. So, I want you to make believe that you are lost. You have no idea where you are, and you go and ask a man, you say, sir, can you please tell me where I am? And that person says, you are 625 miles from Boise, Idaho. So I say, all right, that seems pretty helpful. I'm 625 miles away. Oh, I could be here. Oh, wait a minute. Couldn't I also be anywhere else? There and there and there and there and there. And guys, couldn't I be anywhere on this circle? Yes? Yes. Now, not very helpful. But then I ask a woman and I say, where am I? And she says, you are 690 miles from Minneapolis. Now, look at this. I could be anywhere on that circle, but you know 
that you are 625 miles from Boise and you are 690 miles from Minneapolis, do you guys know that we have cut down our choices? Brenny, where could we possibly be now? And you'll have to unmute yourself. Where can we possibly be now? Um, you could possibly be like somewhere um, inside that rhombus that you made. Oh, you think I could be inside the rhombus? Yeah. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Ben, what do you think? And Ben, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Come on, guys. Keep unmuted. Go ahead. Ben, um, where do you think we could be? Maybe in be like the space inside both of the circles. Well, that's what Vrenny said, and I'm not sure that that's where I'm ending up. Bogdan, what do you think? Uh, I think you can be, so in the rhombus, there are two of two singles, and you can be at any, any one of those. So it's two different places. Wow, that is cool. Now, Charlotte, do you see how you can be at only these two places now? And that is how two satellites work. So right now, guys, two satellites have helped us find our location, but then a third person says, sir, you are 615 miles from Tucson, Arizona. And therefore, guys, we now know that we are not in this position, but we are in that position. We are right here, 615 miles from Tucson, 690 miles from Minneapolis, and 625 miles from Boise. And guys, that is how satellites work, with one exception. Satellites actually take pictures of not circles, but of spheres. So they actually can tell where you are using spheres with a lot of specificity. Now, there are 27 satellites that are in orbit at any one time. 24 of them are working and 23 of them, I'm sorry, three of them are just orbiting just in case one of them goes down. Now this technology was developed by the military many, many years ago and then they opened it up to the whole world. Now, satellites are, can anybody tell me how, what is the altitude of these satellites. What is the altitude, how high above planet Earth do these satellites fly? What do you think? For instance, we know that if this is the planet Earth, we know that an airplane, an airplane is at around six miles yeah. high at its highest point. That's an airplane. Now, uh, let's see, Reed, you uh, flagged in. What, what do you think about a satellite? I think a satellite would be, oh, I know our orbit's over 200 miles, so I'm guessing 300 miles up. And how do the people know these things right off their head in the last question? How do, you, do they know right off their head that they're 615 away from Boise, Idaho? How do they know those things right off their head? Well, you know, it, it, what I did was I simulated three satellites. So a satellite that would be at Tucson, Boise, or Minneapolis is measuring the distance from you and can only measure it in terms of circles. Yeah. So we can only measure it in terms of the radius around you and can tell you how far you are. But it's only when three satellites come together that we have what's called triangulation. And triangulation allows the satellites to pinpoint your very location. Now, you said 200 miles. 
Um, is um about like the gravity starts to weaken there. Watch so that. I'm guessing like like uh, no, it's like the orbits around this. So I'm guessing um 250. So miles. it is exactly 12,000 miles off the surface. And Bogdan? Uh, no, I was I was gonna guess, but. Oh, good. Now, guys, if if the satellite is 12,000 miles up, how many more times is that than an airplane? If we divide 12,000 by six, 2, can you please flag in if you know how many more times further away is the satellite than the airplane? So this is the airplane and this is the satellite. And we know that 12 divided by 6 is what, guys? Two. two. And therefore, and how many times? Say it out two loud, thousand. Brody. 2,000. 2,000 times further. Now, the next time you guys are outside looking at the stars, I want you to look up. And I often find little, little lights that look like stars but they're moving at a very slow speed across the sky. Those are satellites. They are not shooting stars. Shooting stars are usually not stars at all. They're meteors that enter the atmosphere. And, and people so they go really, really fast. But satellites move at a very slow pace. Bogdan? Uh, can't they also be planes? Okay. Yeah, but planes are only, remember, 6,000, I'm sorry, 30,000 feet or about six miles. So Bogdan, think about it. A plane is 2,000 times closer. So I'm going to see the light of a plane much, much brighter. I'm also going to see planes always have blinking red and green lights and white lights. You understand that, Bogdan? And satellites do not have blinking lights. They just have one light. Now, a satellite, guys, is the weight of a small truck. It's about 4,000 pounds. And it's about 4,000 pounds, which is a little more than the average car. A little more than the average car. Now, let's... Yeah, go ahead. Do you have a question? Um, it's two ton. Isn't it two tons? And uh, isn't it two tons? And isn't that how much an elephant weighs? Um. Well, I, I don't really know much about elephants, but I would venture to say that an elephant, uh, very well could weigh that. Now, um, it's pretty pretty heavy. But when you're in twelve thousand miles off of the surface, it's actually pretty light. Now, I want to show you something else. This is, thanks to Rene Descartes, thanks to Rene Descartes, we know that the, I'm sorry, that the planet is broken up into a coordinate grid of latitude and longitude lines. So everybody, can you tell me what happens at this line right here. What is this line called? We all know the name of it. What's it called? Go ahead, say it out loud. The equator. And the equator is called zero degrees latitude. Now, latitude means why. So I was at, um, I was down at the Esplanade this weekend taking a walk with my wife and there was somebody that was a little bit too close. It was somebody we knew. And I said to him, please give us some latitude. So I wanted space in between us as we walk, because as you know, it's much safer to have lots of latitude. So everybody go lat flat. Come on, lat Charlotte, look up please. So lat flat, right? So lat flat is horizontal. Lat flat is horizontal. So if I say equator, you say zero degrees of latitude. Now, what if I ask you about the parallel right 
about here? Tell me if you can, but don't say it out loud. I want you to either chat it to me or raise your hand. What is the latitude of the line, the blue line that I just drew? I'm looking here. for your chat. Yeah. And that latitude. And oh, yeah. very interesting answer. Very interesting. Everybody got the same answer, but nobody got it right. And I'll tell you why. Because oh, I know. when you say 40 degrees, maybe I'm going to Tasmania. Maybe I'm going to Southern Chile. When you say 40 degrees here, you have to say 40 degrees what? North. Right. If you don't say 40 degrees north, you haven't really told me your position. So 40 degrees north is a requirement of latitude. Don't, you don't need north or south when you do zero degrees at the equator, but anything but the equator, you need to give me north or south. Now, north of the equator is called the what hemisphere, everybody, go. The, um, Say northern, it out loud. Tropic of Cancer. Northern hemisphere. It's the northern southern. hemisphere, okay? And south of the equator is the what? Southern. Southern, southern hemisphere. And what about east of the equator? Eastern, I'm um, not hemisphere. Guys, I at, you didn't catch my question. I said east of the equator. You can't be oh. east of an equator, can you? Yeah. So we have to be talking about east of the what? What's it called? The prime meridian? Yes. The vertical line at zero degrees called zero degrees longitude has a name called the prime meridian. Now it was developed in, in Greenwich, England. And so literally it runs through Greenwich, England. And now- Where's the Greenwich it meridian? Made in Greenwich, England, if it runs right through it. Say again? No wonder it was made in, um, in that place, it goes right through it. They must see it every day, but you can't, that's a joke. It is imaginary. Now, the blue line that I just drew, give me the coordinates, please, of that blue longitude line. Send me a chat real quickly, please. I'm looking for the blue line to be identified And remember, oh, nice, nice, nice. Good, guess what? Everybody didn't just say 60 degrees, they said 60 degrees east. Yeah, we don't now, know that. <laughs> now here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell me if I am at 40 degrees north, so 40 degrees north, and 60 degrees east, I am right at that red dot. I am right at that red dot. That is my position on the planet. Now, I want to ask you a little more about this picture. So for instance, if I look at what the Earth is really, is the Earth flat? No. No. Yeah. So, so these longitude lines are kind of like what you would see when you peel back an orange. So if you peel back an orange, and I would do this right after math league class, I would peel an orange, and on the very top, you will see a North Pole. On the very bottom, you will see a what? Um, South Pole. And you will see what kind of lines drawn by this piece of fruit. What are they called? Who's going to raise their hand and share this one? Go ahead, Charlotte. Longitude lines? Absolutely true. 
longitude lines, and it's nature, guys. It's one of the coolest lines of longitude you could ever, ever see. So let's go back and let's look at this. Um, why don't we? Why don't we travel somewhere? Can wait, somebody, I have a question. Wait, wait, Reed. You can't ask a question like that by saying "wait" in the middle of my sentence. You raise your hand. I call on you. You can share. But Sorry. hold on a second. I want to ask you guys to identify to identify the southern tip of Africa. I want you to identify the southern tip of Africa and send me those coordinates. Remember, you always have to give me latitude first and then longitude. Always latitude first, north or south, longitude, east or west. So send me in a chat, Southern Africa is close to what? And that's what I'm looking for. Come on, Evan, I wanna see some good stuff from you. Ben, Vreni, Cole, Reed, Bogdan, Brody, Charlotte, Milo. Milo, you working there? I can't see you, Milo, so you may wanna uh, put yourself, like, like angle the computer down so it's actually looking at you. Now, Evan, you gave me some numbers, but only one direction. I need more than that. I need more than that. Um, uh, remember, you lead with the 40 degrees south, Evan. So if you guys said 40 degrees south, and then what would you say then? Say it out loud. 20 20 degrees east. 20 degrees east you have found that location perfectly. Now, we're gonna take a little trip. The mathletes wanted to go to many, many different places. And so I want to take you there today. So one thing I wanna do, and that's, these are a little bit too easy for you guys, is I want you to go to page, um, I think page, Five in your packet. No, sorry. Go to page seven in your packet. Go to page seven in your packet. It's so now, you know you must what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit larger and I'm going to draw a green line. Now, this one's going to be a little challenging. The the answers are all down below. Of course, not in any particular order. And I want you to tell me by chat, what is the green line representing that I just drew? So I'm looking for the green line that I just drew. And it's one of these answers right here. Ooh, Reed, that's very close. That wasn't one of the answers down there. Bogdan, yeah, very good, but not exactly. There's 130 west. No, no, no. 135. No. Reed, just um, nice and quiet. Just look at it. Look at it and see if you can figure it out. And I haven't had anybody else besides Reed and Bogdan give me their answers. And I want you to, to do that and see if you can come up with something kind of cool. And again, you don't have to be right, but you have to try. You have to try. So I want everybody, Evan, come on, Evan. Brody, Milo, Cole, let's go. Vreni, come on, Charlotte. You can do this. All right? So let's start by looking at this line right here. The prime meridian you know is what? Say it out loud. Zero. No, it is not zero because that would represent also the equator. So you have to say zero what? Longitude. Zero longitude. Ah, damn. Now, the blue line, the blue line 
that I am creating right now, don't say it out loud, the blue line is all the way, halfway around the world on three. One, two, three. 180 W. It's 180 West. Yeah. Now, if the red line is zero longitude and the blue line is 180 West, wouldn't you say that the black line is directly in, in the middle? Yes. And what is on three? One, two, three. What is the black line? Go. On 35 degrees. No. The black line is 90 degrees west. Halfway between zero and 180. And therefore, the green line is halfway between 90 and 180, which is what, guys? Go. 135. Oh, but you can't say 135. Because that's be over here. It's 135. Very, very nice. Now, I want you guys to stop making the noise right now. And I'm going to ask you the next question which is, what does this line, always does that, oh. uh, there we go. What does this line represent right here? Don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. Send me in a chat real quickly, it should take two seconds. Come on, you're going from the center of the earth at zero, zero, and you're going down, down, south, south, south. Say it what on three. I One, two, three, go. No, I don't care about my IQ. Degrees south? I don't it's care about 90, my IQ. 90, 90 degrees south. And 90 degrees south is what location on the planet? Who can tell me 90 degrees south? Bogdan? Antarctica. Oh, it is. And it is the South Pole. So 90 degrees south has only one point. It is the South Pole. And um, zero longest time ever since we've had a few babies. Cole, what does that mean? I doesn't accidentally like press some like things, like the thing at the top, like, like things came up. Oh, I get it, I get it. Now, yeah. The words come up for you to like type in that like, my thing was accidentally held down on them. That's, that's okay. So Charlotte, that is really cool. You just sent me a really cool screenshot. What, what is that? Charlotte, can you, are you on mute? Uh, no. No, so what is that that you sent me? That, that is a really cool design. Oh, I that was an accident. Okay, no, no worries, no worries. So stay, so pay attention, guys. Now, what is this line right here? Curious about what the button was. Oh, I, I love it. Curiosity yeah. is awesome. Who can tell me that line right there? Send me a chat real fast. Real fast. Remember, this point right here is uh, 90 north, this line right here, equator, is zero latitude. So on three, one, two, three, go. 45 north. 45 north. That's the Tropic of Cancer. Um, actually, not exactly the Tropic of Cancer. Let's look at the Tropic of Cancer right now. So the Tropic of Cancer is right about here. Did I see it? Mm -hmm. And I think this is the Tropic of Cap Capricorn. Yeah. Right over here. Yeah, I've been there. And it runs right through Australia. Now, I want to tell you a little story about something that I enjoy very much. And that is looking at the 41st parallel. And the 41st parallel takes me to a very special thing. So we're gonna go, we're gonna look at the planet Earth on a nice uh, colored diagram. 
And I'm going to go to the 41st parallel, which is right about there. And we're going to go straight across. Now, the 41st parallel north, so 41st or 42nd parallel north, happens to run right through what? A, a, a very special place. How many of you have an iPhone on them right now? No, but I can use If the you have an iPhone, you can go to a Compass app. And you can go to a Compass app on the iPhone, all right? And let me show you what that looks like. It will be right here. And your Compass app will actually tell you your exact location. So we are in Boston, 42 degrees north, 71 degrees west. That's where we are on the planet right now. And so then if I go here, we can see Boston, we can see Northern California. Can anybody tell me what we see over here? Um, I can't read the Portugal? tiny text. Spain? Portugal? Portugal. Portugal. Spain? Spain? Italy? China? Greece? Armenia and Turkey? China. China, yes. North Korea, North Korea. and Japan. And there is a restaurant, you guys might really like this. There's a restaurant in Boston called Lola 42. Now, Lola, what do you think Lola stands for? Um, longitude, no. Latitude. No. longitude, latitude, 42. And it has, excuse me, it has food from all across the 42nd parallel. Now, what? I love going there because I love Japanese and Chinese and Turkish and Spanish and Portuguese and even Chicago, where I was born, is on the 42nd parallel. Now, Nantucket is an island that is a little bit south of Boston. It's about 70 miles south. Now, listen to this. You ready? Oh, can you not swing that, Cole? Can you just swing that? It's just a little distracting. So the um, if Boston is the 42nd parallel and Nantucket is 70 miles south and each degree represents about 70 miles, therefore, what degree north is Nantucket? Brenny, what do you think? Um, können noch einmal eine Aus Ausnahme machen, dass wir schon eine allerletzte Warnung. Wenn es noch ein einziges Mal passiert, weißt du, ich jetzt kein Wort mehr. Ähm. Um. Die Betty hat sogar gesagt, gar keine Elektronik mehr. Any ideas? No. Okay, so is 70 miles equals one degree. Nantucket is about 70 miles south of Boston. So what degree measurement do you think is Nantucket? Um, 41. Yeah, that's right, Evan. So there is a restaurant there called Lola, Lola 41. And Wait, it is has, that a chain? Say again? Is it a chain just with Well, different... they have a few restaurants, but they're all about long, the latitude of 42 north and 41 north. Now, what I want you guys to do now is I want you to go and let's go to um, page eight. Go to page eight in your packet. And nice and quiet, please. Nice and quiet. So go to page eight in your packet. And what I want you to do is I want you to locate Jakarta. And it, the reason I want you to locate it is because not a lot of people know where Jakarta is, but since you have the coordinates of six degrees south, 106 degrees east, please put a dot and a small j next to Jakarta. And go ahead and do that. 
Oopsie. And I'm just requ uh, requesting that you unmute. And Milo, are you with us? Maybe not. Okay, so did you guys find it? So it's right about the equator, a little bit south of the equator, and 106 degrees. That's and how many of you found it right about here? How'd you guys do on that? Did you find it right about there? Yep. Okay, so I put a little J in there. Oh. Where do you guys want to go to now? Hawaii. Like to go to, where oh, do you want to go? Hawaii. Okay. So is Hawaii on this list? Um, it's on this giant one right here. Okay. You know what? Why don't you guys know. tell me the coordinates of Hawaii at the blue dot with the little H? I want you guys write. Hawaii, and then I want you to write the coordinates. Go ahead and do that. Oh, wow. Ben, you are a geography guy. Awesome. That's very cool. Milo, how are you doing with this? Milo, can you tell me the coordinates for Hawaii? Like, um, me and my mom are trying to find the page. Yeah, me too. Well, you know what? Don't look at the page. Just look at Mr. Kramer's screen. And Mr. Kramer's screen has, has Hawaii marked with an H. Can you tell me what the uh, coordinates are for Hawaii? Good ones. Um, one, two, um, what do you think, Milo? Um, First, give me the latitude, north of the equator or south of the equator, by how many degrees? Go ahead. 20 north. Yep. 20 north, and Bogdan, why don't you give me the longitude? Uh, 160 west, and also I did 21 north. Ooh, well, you know what? Hawaii is a string of islands. Yeah. So some of Hawaii is in, and Evan, can you not keep turning around because it's a little distracting and mm -hmm. I'm getting dizzy and uh, I don't want to fall down. I'm just kidding. But no, if, I would appreciate that. So Hawaii, Reed, is 20 degrees north, 160 west. When you said 21 degrees north, yes, there are certain islands that maybe are a little bit north of that. Okay, let's pick a new one. I want to pick Nairobi. So I want you guys to go to Nairobi and put an N right at Nairobi, please. So I want you to do Nairobi and then put an N right in there. Now it says it's one degree south, which is really close to the equator, and 37 degrees east, which is close to 40 but a little west of 40 degrees. And if you found yourself right in East Central Africa, you got it. Now I want you guys to continue working right now. And I want you to put all of these places on this map as expertly as you can. So for instance, isn't London kind of cool? 51 north, zero west. So London is 51 north. So London is 51 north, but it's pretty much right on the prime meridian. It's pretty much on the prime meridian. And that is London. Are you guys working this? Yeah. Evan, are you working it? Uh, yeah. Good, good. Charlotte, which one are you working on right now? Um, I think K. 
Can I do Tokyo? I want you to do them all. I want you to do them all, but Tokyo is one of my favorite places. Please do Tokyo. 35 degrees north, 139 east. You want me to mark it on the map? Oh, yeah. Wait, mark them all. Annotate, never mind. You mark them all. So Tokyo, 35 degrees north, 139. Just. Now, I was in Tokyo one year ago, February, and it was a really special place. But let me ask you a question. Was it any different climate than Boston? No. No, because Boston is the 42nd north. Tokyo is 35. So it was about seven degrees south of Boston. And seven degrees represents, well, if each degree is 70 miles, how many miles south of Boston would you say Tokyo is? Come on, guys. What do you think, Brody? Um, Cole, what do you think? Ben? 490. Yeah, about 500 miles. So really, if you think about it, Tokyo was a little warmer, kind of like Washington, D.C., and Tokyo are on the same parallel. They are on the wow. same latitude. So keep going, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Sydney, Australia right now. I'm going to Sydney. 34 south. 34 south. And 151. Whoa. I would really love to go to Sydney, Australia. Someday. Someday. And Toronto is where I was just recently on the way back from Columbia. And we had a layover there at 43 North, 79 West. So 43 North, 79 West. Seattle. If anybody's having trouble with any of these points, Reed, are you um, raising your hand, buddy? Um, yeah, I had a question and I just forgot it. Okay. Oh, you know what? Uh, oh, and Bogdan, you had a question. What? Uh, no, I. No, I don't have a question. Okay, good. So, Cole, what are you working on? Which which city? Um, Cape Town. Oh, Cape Town? My dad came from there. Really? That's so cool. So, 34 is a south, capital. 18 east. So, 34 south. Oh, wow. Check it out. Cole, uh, Cape Town is on the same parallel as Sydney, Australia. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. So, I didn't really have to do the coordinate points because I already knew where it was. Ah, yeah. Hey, Ben, which one are you working on? Um, and Ben, I can't see you. Can you angle your computer down? All I, all I see is the top of your head. So angle the computer down, like literally just angle it down. And there you go. And Milo, I don't see you at all. So if you could come back to us, that'd be great. And now the other thing, guys, I want you to look up at my screen for a second. The other thing you guys can do is map out your trip. Say, hey, Hawaii to Toronto to London, to Tokyo, to Sydney, to Jakarta, to Nairobi, to Cape Town, and back to Hawaii. So you could make your own little trip and see how you want to travel around the world, 
okay? Um, I actually have a friend who took a trip around the world with his family and they went to many of these countries and many, many more. It took them one year. So they, they took their kids out of school for one year and homeschooled them and it was pretty amazing. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to look at all these wonderful challenges. So the challenges that I've given you today are this one here asks you for the cities at Lat Lan. This one here asks you for certain information on the United States. I really like this one here because it's, it points out some really cool cities that I haven't really thought of in a long time, such as um, Lincoln, Nebraska, which is right here. Really cool at 40 degrees north, 96 degrees west. I really like that one. And I also like the challenge uh, here. It's kind of a fun one. I want to see if you guys could get all of it. Now, I did give you answers. And the other thing is, is I gave you a picture of, Be of China, of Beijing. Mm -hmm. And I also gave you a website called latlong.net. And so wherever you want to go, you can put your lat long right in there and it gives it to you immediately. And now the best part of this lesson, in my opinion, is the page in your packet number, page number 12. And everybody go to page number 12. And this is where I want you to spend most of your time. These are all the places that the math leagues were going to travel to. And I want you to create a beautiful diagram of all of these places and take yourself around the world. Because I don't think there were any continents that people were not going to go to, except maybe Antarctica. Um, but people were going to Asia, Europe, Africa, Australia, South America, Canada, United States. Say again. Canada. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got. Um, what do I have in Canada here? I have Richmond Hill, Ontario. I have Toronto, Canada. Um, I don't know if I have any other places in Canada, but Canada is very, very popular. My favorite place I've never been to is Hawaii. So I would love Me too. to go I there. Want to go to Hawaii. And one of the coolest that my mathletes had was Galway, Ireland. So Galway, Ireland is a really special place. I've never been to Galway, but I've been to Dublin. And it's a beautiful country. The people are amazing. And all I have to say to you guys is next year in the land of Israel or wherever you want to travel. So guys, let's count right now by from 180 west, which I would call that negative 180, and let's count by 35 degrees. We're gonna add 35 degrees north as we go through. Are you ready? Go. 180 west. 180. On what? 35. 35. One. Wait, 45. you know what? 45. Yeah, 45. let's go by 45. Let's go by 45. Wait, that was the answer though. 145. 135 west. Go. 90. 90, 90 degrees west. west. Oh. Go. 45 degrees, 90 degrees west. west. Go. Zero. Ah, you didn't say zero west. Awesome. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? South Pole, North Pole, go world. And go right now, guys, and go get yourself an orange and peel that orange and let me know if you think that it represents longitude the same way I told you it did. 
and have a great afternoon. I'll see you in 167 hours. Send me all the work that you want to. Show me some really good pages that you've created and take a trip around the world. Wait, I'll how many you. of these papers do we need to do? Uh, say again? How many of these papers do we need to do? Like two you days? don't need to do any read. You can only, only do what you want to, what you enjoy. That's the beauty of exploration. Yes, sir, Cole. Um, I only have pages one through nine. Um, I think I gave you 13 or 14 pages. I'm not so, yeah, but In my packet, I only have one through nine. Well, it, it may be the other, maybe you ran out of paper in the printer. So yeah, it, there's 14. It's, there's there's 14. 14 pages. And Cole, if you want me to send it to you again, just have your parents send me an email. Okay, buddy? Bye. Take care, guys. Bye.